we, we can uh, proceed from uh, where we ended on Friday. We've been discussing uh, the frameworks that are used by monitoring and evaluation, and we understand that um, we understand that the frameworks are quite uh, fundamental in uh, monitoring and evaluation. Um, for the conceptual framework, it's non-negotiable that uh, the conceptual framework uh, reflects in your M and D plan. Then, for the resource framework and the logical framework, you can decide to pick one. Like I've never seen a program or a project or a policy where they have combined the result framework and the logical framework at the same time. So if you've got enough resources, there's no problem. You can, uh, you can always integrate the two in your project. So today we are going to discuss this thing called the uh, logic module. Actually, this is the simplest. Uh, among the frameworks, the logic model is, is very simple. But before we can move on, I would like to ask a question. Who can tell us the story about uh, the result framework? Or who can define for us the result framework? Or not necessarily defining what it is exactly, but at least someone to say something like, oh, what I know about the result framework, I know there's this, there's this, there's this. Is that anyone who can say something about uh, the strategic framework? That's the same uh, result framework. Before we can move on to the logic model, I would like to get feedback. Yes, sir. So it started for us. That we are started for us. So I need to say something, right? Who is gonna say something about the result from it? He started for us already. Mr. Shamptai. <laughs> and say, is that anyone who can say something about the result from it? I mean, it could be a definition, or it could be how it is developed. Upwards, right? Exactly. So it's taking us up. It's reported from the output. It's going upwards, right? So it means, in a nutshell, it assumes uh, inputs and uh, it assumes that the inputs and uh, the activities are intangible. If I may use that word, intangible. In other words, they're just hidden somewhere, right? Then from whatever you're going to be doing with your resources and your activities, now you begin identifying results. If we do this result, what are we, I mean, if we do this activity, what are we going to get from this activity? That's a result, right? So you start building your result framework from there. You start by identifying those results that will come immediately, then there will be results that will come after this level, then the results after this level, until you build everything, until you connect it to the goal. That's how we build the result framework. And in the group, I actually posted, what's the importance of us building the framework? I mean, the result framework. It means if we are to develop the indicators, the indicators will come from the same results that we've identified. We want to be tracking progress at each level. Have we achieved this? So it means the indicators will come from the very framework that we identified. Just like for the conceptual framework, we said that the activities will come from the conceptual framework, right? Exactly. Then uh, on Friday, we looked at uh, the logical framework, which is the, a little bit similar to the, to the result framework. But the only difference is that uh, the logic model is quite, I mean, the logic framework is quite details. It will look at uh, what you want to achieve first, right? Which was coming in the narrative summary. There was a column which was narrative first. What do you want to achieve? So here at the input, you need to have resources, right? At uh, the activities, you're going to specify that these are the activities that we want to do. At the outputs, you're going to specify these are the results that we want to see at the output level. At the outcome level, you're going to specify these are the results that we want to have. Then finally, you go to what? To your goal, right? Then the next column was talking about how are you going to be measuring the same achievements from the inputs. Talks, it talked about indicators, right? So you are going to put the indicators that you are going to be reporting on. Then the third column was talking about the means of verification. Where are you going to be getting the information for you to be able to measure the indicator so that you can tell that we've succeeded or we have not succeeded? Are we together? Then the last column was talking about assumptions. What else must happen for 
this particular achievement to be met. And that assumption it only happens at that level. The assumption that we talk about there, it should not affect what is in the next level. The next level should also have their own assumptions. That's how there is, I mean, that's how the logical framework is supposed to be built. So today we are going to proceed and look at the simplest thing, which is a logic model. So the, log the logic model just uh, clarifies the relationship in a linear way, starting from the inputs, activities, outputs, outcome and the impacts. Just from the definition itself is something that relates to the other frameworks that we've been discussing. So I'll quickly go to I'll quickly go to the actual logic model. So that's a definition diagram that illustrates the linear relationship flowing from the program, inputs, processes, outputs, and outcomes. So last time I was saying that for me, my concern is not for you to understand what the definition is. If you know how to develop the logic model, then it means you can use your own intuition and uh, define what the logic model is. So, like at your level, don't draw much about the definition. You need to look at the actual thing. How can I develop this thing? How can I integrate my logic model in my project? How can I use my result framework in my policy? How can I use my logical framework in my program, if at all you are a program manager? So this is what we are talking about. That it only shows the relationship in a linear way, flowing from uh, the inputs all the way to the, to the impact. And we know that the impact is what? Sorry, when we talk about the impact, what do we mean to be precise? Sorry, the desired what? No, I can hear you. When you talk about the impact, what exactly are we talking about? Okay, so we can start one by one from the, from the impact. So the impact we are talking about, the goal, the goal for the project, where do you want to be in the next five years? So the impact just simply means the state that will subsist after you've resolved all those issues that you are that you, that you identified as a affecting the community. Let me take it from the load shedding that we've been using, right? We identified all the cause of factors, right? So now we are going to to say our goal is going to be reducing load shedding, maybe let's say to one percent, right? So it means after resolving all those cause of factors that were identified, we should now go to 1% load shedding in Zambia, and that's the impact. That impact simply means the goal. That's the final thing. That's what we want to be as a project. So now, this one now will just explain how now you are going to move from all the resources that you have, and now you are going to attain your impact, or rather, how you are going to achieve your goal. So, input there, we are talking about resources, right? Same things, we discuss this. So, you talk about the people, you are going to talk about resources, I mean, uh, resources in terms of money, you are going to talk about, uh, what else can we talk about under the inputs? Machinery, exactly, what else? Facilities, system, say what? People, money, exactly, that's what we are talking about. But the only uh, unique thing about the logic model is, the logic model is that everything that we talk about in, uh, from this level to this level are supposed to be indicators. Everything that we talk about here, if we say human capital, then it means that human capital is an indicator, we are supposed to be measuring that human capital. When we talk about the financial sources, that's an indicator that we are going to be reporting on, how much do we have. So if we move on, we go to the activities. Oh, flowing from this point all the way to this point are all called indicators. It's now different from the result framework, right? The result framework is started from here, right? Just identifying the results, not necessarily the indicators. But here, all these things are supposed to be indicators, and we are going to do it together. So processes, we say these are activities, right? Am I correct? So I said the other term for activities is called the process. So in some literature, you may not find the activities, they will put process. So here, 
The one challenge is that you don't even know what the problem was. But I think from uh, when we look at this, we can even try to come up with a problem. Because we are talking about increased contraception equivalence, increased access to contraception, increased access. So you can even identify what the problem was, right? When you look at just at the nature of uh, this social model, what could be the problem in this case? We are talking about uh, increasing our contraception equivalence or contraception use. What could have been the issue? Please, can you say People are already tired. You see the number of unwanted pregnancies, right? So we are now on to this is a program which is now be looking at the issue of our conversation. Just in general conversation. We know that there are a lot of our conversations, they are modern. Traditional and so on and so forth, but this is just in general. So, here you are going to identify the activities. What exactly are you going to be doing? So, this was talking about educating men and women about the advantages of modern conversation, which modern methods use, distribute family planning. In fact, it wasn't supposed to be methods, because planning is big methods. The community, friend program staff, and providing uh, family planning information and methods. So, those are there are just three listed activities that you are going to decide as a project. And this is what we are going to be doing. Are we clear? Remember, I said that these are indicators who will still come back. Then, when we move on, you go to, to the outputs. So, after you doing this, you educate me. You distribute this, then you train the program. I mean, you, uh, you train the people that are going to be working on this particular program. What are you going to see immediately after doing all those listed activities? So, the immediate results that will come from this is now what I call the outputs. So, can I have someone to read for me the best bullet there so that we can, so that we agree together that indeed from those listed activities, it's possible for us to have that as an immediate reason. Who can read for us the first bullet? Exactly. Sessions held in community about family planning. Is it true that this can be an immediate result from all those three listed activities? It is. Then because this is an indicator, how can we write it? So of course we can say the number of sessions, the number of sessions held in community about family planning methods. I'm using the word number so that I quantify it, so that it will be very easy for me to measure it, right? And it's talking about numbers, right? So it means I'll just count the number of uh, sessions that we held and we put on that chart. Four sessions were held. So now, remember that um, you are going to agree as a project that uh, looking at this, we are going to hold, let's say, 10 sessions, right? So for you to decide you to agree on 10, on 10 sessions, then you know that if we can only hold those 10 sessions, then please, we are going to, also because this is talking about when they please, we are going to go sensitize the number of people that we want to be receiving this service, right? So in other ways, it means failure to meet your target it might affect your impact, isn't it? So it means this can now become the indicator that you're going to be putting on. And it's an indicator that because you're going to be using what you planned and what you have achieved so far. Then from there, you should be able to account for the violence. If you're planning to do 10 sessions, why have you conducted only five? Would it be the resources that were not coming on time? If the resources were not coming on time, then you know what to do next. Right? If the resources did not come on time, the reason why you conducted five sessions and not ten, you got the fact that the uh, resources did not come on time. So you know what to do next, you need to work on the resources. Maybe it could be the people that are partnering with you, they are not giving you money on time. So what do you do? You need to employ someone who is just going to be dealing with you. The people giving you the money so that you, you start receiving money on time. Otherwise, if you don't receive money on time, you are going to be affected as a project. You are not going to achieve your target at the end of the day. 
and I'm sure you've been uh, learning with uh, Mr. Mr. Kennedy here, where he talk about that in a project. Oh, let, me, let, me, let me not let me not go that side. Oh, we can move on. So increased interest in family planning. So let's look at this point. Is it true that this point can be a needed result of the activity that we have here? Increased interest in family planning. Is it true that this can be an immediate reason that can be done for those pre-listed activities? We are doing this side, we are doing what we are doing. But when people are quite I'll assume that everything is okay and move on, right? Okay. Family. So this family is supposed to be networked. So those plan is to be the network. Let's let's say family planning uh, I don't know how to put it. Family planning what? Sorry? <laughs> Family planning services? Sorry? Family planning and projects distributed. Okay, let's just say contraceptives distributed in communities, right? Exactly, this can be a media If we are saying distributed family planning, it means we've distributed, that's an immediate thing. That's why we say that an output is that very thing that you see right after you're doing an activity. The clinic staff trained in family planning, method counseling, can that be a immediate reason for those listed activities? Definitely, yes, right? Then now, you move on from the output level, now you go to the outcome level, and this talk of course about it, behavior change in the people that are feeling the same. It's no wonder behavior change is not a one day thing. It's something that takes time. Could be six months, could be ten years, could be five years, depending on the nature of the problem that you're trying to address. Like smoking. It's not a one day thing. Someone can change today, but the question is, are they going to sustain? It's possible someone has been there for two weeks, then the other day they are smoking. So it's about sustaining that new behavior. So that's why this one is about changing behavior. And it takes a little bit of time. So now let's say increase access to contraceptive methods. Let's justify this. Increase access to contraceptive methods. Can this be an outcome or an output? So I know what I have in here is me was cooking a jumbo this and I wonder if you had me to be discussing. Since we are talking about it, that this comes in the video and it takes a little bit of time to happen and you look at behavior change in those that are seeing the same. Are we together? So now, here is this thing listed as an article. Increase the access to contraceptive methods. Can this be an outcome or an output or impact? Or an activity. Yes. It's an output. Are you able to just try it? So it's through training and educating. And educating is the people, the more people that are coming to the network. So our past, right? Um, the past was, uh, I'm looking at access as in knowing the availability. Knowing the availability, right? So it means those things are available now. People are coming to us. Okay. Sister, I wanted to say something. No? Okay. So, Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But it would be up to the people that are going to get it to come and access it. To come and access it, right? Yes. So exactly. which can be done, which can happen in the long run after deciding. Actually. Okay. Okay, she's put it in that context. In fact, so you wanted to say something. <laughs> we also wanted to, to contribute. So let's look at the way it asks. Increase access to contraceptive methods. So, here when you look at the way it is, and this bullet that we put, 
Okay, to make it easy, usually when you see the weight increase, the increase always go into the outcome, just like the weight improved, mostly improved before in the outcome. Yes, sir. Because here, 
as a project, you've got information, you've got sufficient enough to be able to measure the indicators. So here you can say the number of number of uh, they say percentage of for those of you that have uh, that have been working on projects, you see that other people they say number of in fact they don't really like the word number, they just is it hash? They just put hash and say number of sessions immediately you see such a quiz. For them, they have put it, it's an indicator for them. It means they're going to be correct information specifically for this particular indicator, then we report of it. But from the number of, uh, we run the general sessions, but so far we've collected eight, and we are still within the timeline. Maybe let's say we still have uh, six more months to we are still within the timeline. That means we are moving according to plan. But if you are not moving according to plan, you must ask yourself where is the challenge so that you you make a correction so that next time you do it much better and you continue making the same and the same mistake over and over again. It's going to affect you achieving your impact. And usually the impact, you don't have really to put a lot of things. The impact is simply the same problem that you are in Now here I'm just trying to explain it uh, in the opposite way so that uh, it sounds like a reason. So there are certain uh, problems which let me, let me see what I can do. What I can do. Let's say, let's say that uh, it was, uh, the problem was that uh, pink is the number of unconscious pregnancy, right? Or let's say, uh, yeah. So that was uh, our problem, right? So on the other hand, we are just saying increased conversation privilege. Privilege, you're talking about, uh, I mean, increased conversation privilege, you're talking about the number of people that are using that particular service, relating them to the total population. We have a total population of 50. What as what's a proportion or rather the percentage of those that are using and sustaining the contraceptives within the population. Or maybe the sense that we will say increase contraceptive prevalence. What can we say? Using the same problem, which is increasing the number of unwanted pregnancies. We don't want to use the one popular. We can say reduction in what? Sorry? Reduction in the number of unwanted pregnancies. That's our problem. That's what we want to do. After we resolve everything, we must see a reduction. So the impact is simply the very problem, then we just turn it to the purpose. Are we together? So the simplest thing is to build this one. For me, I find the logic model to be very easy and simple. It's not that complicated. The one thing that is complicated is now reasoning when you are brainstorming. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? If you do this, which results are we going to see immediately? Then in a wrong land, what are we going to, to, to see? Then at the end of it is, is the impact. So here it's very simple, right? Then here it becomes a little bit complicated because you need to identify the activity. The better way of doing it is that you list as many activities as possible. Then once you have them, you can even have them. Then from there you start justifying why that particular activity should be stay in that project. If it's not adding value, you exclude it. If it's adding more value as compared to another activity, then you maintain the one which is giving you more results, then you exclude that one, right? We don't want to have a number of activities, and though some of those activities may, may not even give us the outputs that we need, that means that particular activity. In as much as it may be important, but if it's not giving us what we want as a project, we can exclude that particular activity. Any questions on the logic model? I find it to be very simple myself. It shows the linear relationship that all these things that are in the talk about you, you can say, Number of uh, family clients, num number of uh, conversations in different communities. So, usually, whatever we have, we are indicators. But with those other frameworks, we just identify the instance where we are going to say that access to conversations. Then, at the end, you are now going to have an indicator plan where now we are going to have everything and now document the indicators and details, which we are going to cover. There's something called indicator reference where now we are supposed to clearly specify. How we are going to be measuring the same indicator, everything will be documented as you are going to see later on. So that if you were to resign as an M1 specialist, if someone comes in, 
It should be very easy for them just to look at the document and understand how we are planning from the beginning, that this is how we intend to measure this thing. It becomes very easy. And if you resign, a junior personnel can take over and just look at the M and plan, they will be able to understand that the business should move on. They all insert that to make sure if you resign, business should not stop. Business should continue. So in your M and D plan, you can choose either to use this one, or you can use the results framework, or you can use the logical framework. You can use one. But for the concept of framework, whether you like it or not, it's supposed to be there. Are we together? It's supposed to be there. Then for these other three frameworks, which talks about which include the logical models, the logical framework, and the results framework, you can pick one. But there are other bilateral organizations like USID. I'm not just so sure between USID and PEPFA. It should be one, then they use the results framework. Whether you are familiar with the logic model, it's very simple to develop. They are not concerned about it. Then they just want you to use the results framework for them. And that's why, because they're giving you the money, they're dictating that whatever you're going to be doing as a project. And that's one of the disadvantages of using uh, donor monies. They dictate what you do in a project. You don't have autonomy. Like they will tell you, even in the census, for example, because uh, sometimes back those guys they used to pump in money, not only in Zambia but in other countries. So it means they will tell you that the variable that you want to be captured in this particular service, this and this and this and this. You as a government, if you are maybe, you, for example, you are, you are interested to look at contraceptive, if they don't want you, if they don't have any value with the contraceptive, they will say no because. They're giving you the money and you can't say no because you don't have the money, you still need the same money. So at the end, you just agree with them and measure what you are not even using as a country. So those are some of uh, the challenges uh, in using uh, donor-funded uh, projects or money. Then there's this thing called the theory of change as well, which is also mandatory. It's supposed to be there. The theory of change. The theory of change. Who's got an idea about what the theory of change is? Are we meeting this term for the very first time? Are you sure I am meeting for the very first time? Who is meeting this term called the theory of change for the very, very first time? Sister. Or oh, sister that meet for the very first time, then sister there. <laughs> Yes, sir. This one. <laughs> I was so happy that they posted me that you want to introduce this discussion for us. <laughs> sir, are you also meeting for the very first time? Oh. Mr. Shaman, are even you meeting for the very first time? You are familiar with it. Are you able to share some? I mean, are you able to share something on the theology? The necessary skills and all prescribes the necessary skills that should happen for the change to occur, right? Yeah. Exactly. So when we look at that, there are two things here. There's a theory and there is a change, right? Exactly. So when you say a theory, and this, this is common, especially for those that are doing this, no, you need to do theoretical framework. Precisely what we talk about when we are talking about theory. A theory is what? Just a body of ideas that tries to explain a particular social phenomenon or tries to explain an event, isn't it? Right? So it means living here is just a set of ideas that you, people that are going to work in that particular project, you are going to assume that this thing must happen for this change to happen. This thing must happen here for this particular change to be seen. This change must happen for this for this particular change. I mean, this particular thing should happen for this particular change to be seen. That's more like an assumption, right? That's more like what we have in the logical framework. We must have, we must raise the resources for us to be able to procure the construction materials, for us to raise the basic hygiene workshops. That is a, a bit similar to, to the theory of change. And it's mandatory that we include it. It's very simple. You just use the term, if there are resources, then this, as simple as that. And you can decide whether you want to 
write it uh, in a narrative format, or if you want, you can present it in a tagline. See who is going to decide. It's, it's quite simple. So the theory of change defines the pieces and steps necessary to bring about a given long-term goal, which Mr. Shamta uh, defined for us. It describes the types of interventions, steps that will, that will bring about the results hoped for. It describes how and why desired change is expected to happen in a particular way. So we've talked about three things, and this thing will come just, just now when we now start looking at how we can build this theory of change. So I don't know, I know that you will not master this, but at least you are going to have an idea. It's talking about interventions somewhere, it's talking about steps that should, uh, that should be put in order for something to happen, then it's also answering how and why that particular change is to happen or should happen in a particular way. Importance of theory of change, I'm sure I can uh, read this leads to better planning intervention and activities, steps in developing the theory of change. So these are the steps that are supposed to be, to be followed if we are developing the theory of change. Identify a problem, and that's the first step, right? Even in a project, the reason why that project should exist, there must be a problem somewhere, right? So we must identify a need. There's a problem there, and this problem needs need the attention, right? So we might define what the problem is. Let's say we share the problem, the national level, right? Exactly. And the second point is talking about identify possible causes of the problem. This is getting us where? Conceptual level, right? We need to identify the possible causes of the That particular problem is that we have identified. Okay? What's the second, what's the third bullet? Identify your problem for the design change. So let's say the problem is not changed. What could our problem go or decide to change? Sorry? Sorry, sister? Knowledge should be. Exactly. It's supposed to be. Knowledge should be. That's what we want to be. That's our project. Are we together? Then the, third, the fourth bullet is talking about what? Identify interventions or solutions. So what could be? The solutions to this possible factor. The conceptual framework, when I look at this, this is a conceptual framework it anchors almost everything. When I look at the way things are coming in, we just talk about the solutions, where, how am I going to develop the solutions? I must know the possible causes of factors. And it will be very easy for me to come up with solutions. But if I don't know, the reason why this problem is a very society is very difficult for me to come up with a solution. But if I know the factors leading to that problem, then the solution will be to cut off those factors, isn't it? So that's what I'm saying that for me when I look at this, it means the conceptual framework it seems like there's something that anchors everything in the Then they identify the activities from when? Where are you going to draw your activities? From the very conceptual framework, you will specify that no, this factor is to this, this factor is to this. So, what are you going to do? Look at the possible cause of factors. Then, from there, plan your activities. Okay, we are going to be addressing uh, climate change. I don't know what that means. That's it, climate change is coming on the other side. Because climate change, the, there are a lot of things involved in climate change, right? It means we can be, we could be some an activity looking at deforestation. Activity looking at uh, the maintenance of equipment, so like we say, there yeah, could be an activity that is looking at uh, corruption at the national level, exactly. Then identify problem outcomes. Identify problem outcomes. How can we identify problem outcomes? You have already built your biological model. 
is very useful if I can find the right. Or that is the result frame which also from the result frame which you can get the actual resource. All these things that we are talking about, they are all connected. And that's why you see that when you look at this, when you look at the logic model, when you look at the result framework, when you look at uh, the conceptual framework, when you look at the log framework, you see that there are similarities. They may differ a bit, but there are similarities. Then show also links of activities to the outcome. This is what we're trying to show you the logic model, right? How to show you know, this, this, this will be this, this and this will be this. So, even in the logical framework, it's like that because it starts at the inputs. Inputs, outputs, right? I mean activities. They need to show how everything will happen from the resources all the way up to the desired change, which is the impact. In this case, we're talking about food. Now we'll show you. If it is, then identify your assumptions. Identify your assumptions. Which framework talks about assumptions? Logical framework, right? Logical framework talks about assumptions. And we are going to look at that. So these are about uh, four, I mean, eight steps that are supposed to be followed for you to develop uh, the theory of, I mean, the theory of change. Sometimes you may not even look at uh, these steps. This is just to help you uh, understand exactly what the theory of change is all about and how you can go about trying to develop this theory of change. But when you become an expert, you will not even be following this thing because you will have already consumed everything and everything becomes part of you. Then you just sit on a table and start developing. Oh, looking at this and this, okay? If we do this, this will lead to this. If this happens, then this will lead to this. So we can now uh, consider this example. Um, so this is not an example. This is just a number of things which I said. Okay, either put it in a dark lamp or it can be a narration. Then the real example is coming. Just saying the theory of change can be presented in a narrative form or in a diagram. Let's consider this example. So this is 52. Maybe we may end after this example. Who can read for us? That's an example there. Who can read for us? Mm -hmm. So a secondary teacher is concerned with uh, the poor performance of pupils at school. Are we following? A secondary teacher, he is concerned with the poor performance of pupils at school. What's the problem there? Poor performance, right? So if you are to develop the theory of change, you said the first step is what? Identify the problem, identify the need. Are we together? We move on. Second bullet sister. So there is a part now is willing to push in uh, millions of dollars just to ensure that uh, performance improves among students through a feeding program, right? So a feeding program is what? When you look at these steps. When we look at these steps, a feeding program for where can we classify the feeding program? Would it be an intervention or a solution or what? Or an activity? It's an intervention, right? Do we all agree that a feeding program can be an intervention? Or could it be an activity? Or is it an outcome? Or is it an input? It's an intervention, right? It's a solution. The solution is a uh, a feeding program, right? I think before I can even show, you can even try to discuss what's the time first. We've got six minutes. You can manage to develop our own theory of change, right? So let me go back. Here. So we've looked at the intervention, then we've looked at. Uh, We've identified the problem. So what could be the causal factors that can lead to poor performance among pupils in school? Precisely, we use primary school. And yes. Hunger, right? 
Exactly. If I've not eaten, then I come to class, it means my concentration will be low. So there will be the higher chance for me to fail. Do we agree, right? What else? What else can we look at? Let's confine it because we've already identified the intervention that this is a feeding program, right? That's an intervention. So what else? We've talked about hunger. What else? Sorry? Chores? For the, for the children? I don't understand. I don't understand. What do you mean precisely? Oh, doing a lot of work at home. Something that can affect the child. They go to class, they're very tired. No concentration. They go and sleep in class. It's break time, of course, because the friends are, I mean, other friends are going out, they also go outside. Then they come back, they sleep in class. No concentration. There's a higher chance for that particular child to fail. Exactly. Where they come from, distance that they come from their mother's place or from their parents' place to school, right? And there are those like when you go in the village, you find that are kids, not necessarily kids, or maybe let's say someone who is aged, let me say 10, they walk about five kilometers to go to school, but at least this time around, we, we've, seen the, uh, we've seen an increase in the number of uh, primary schools that are being built, but we are, we are not yet. We still, we still need to do much. Like there are some places where schools are still very far and we need to take schools there. So we've looked at uh, the work that they do, what they hit and the distance that they cover. So those maybe could be the possible factors that we can use to put performance and keep it in school, right? Then uh, let's identify what could be our problem for. What could be our problem for? improve the people's performances, right? That's a desired change. That's what we want to bring about as a program, as an intervention. And let's try to identify activities. What are we going to do? Exactly. So we talked about hunger, which I'm sure that's the major component of the food program, right? So what could be an activity? Sorry? Providing food, right? Exactly. Okay, let's just speak it from the other particular aspect. I think our major activity is the provision of food to the states, right? Okay. And for me, the one looking at this, if you just identify this and this, everything becomes very easy to follow. So this part, this particular part is very easy. So if you just say provision of food, where is it coming from? From what you said, that hunger is a major cause of problems. Then from the same cause of fact, I'll just frame it and it become my activity. Then now uh, we look at the identify program outcome. What could be our outcome? Or let's start at output, right? I know we don't have an output here. What could be our output? What could be our output? Our activities, provision of food. Children are fed, food provided, right? Exactly. Then what would be our outcome after giving them food? Sorry? Things. Children become what? Alert in terms of what? So now we can talk about increased concentration in class, right? Then eventually, what would be the result? Improved performance. But remember, this happens at primary school. It's more like we're trying to assume that. And the possible result of feeding them food was increased concentration. And because there's increased concentration in the food, what? Increased performance. That's more like an assumption when we plan it. So it's possible that even after feeding them, even after giving them food, whatever and whatever, we can still see poor performance, right? And no wonder now, in the theory of change now, there must be assumptions. So it's not just cause about food. Also, do they even have books again? Are we together? And then the same point, the quality of the teachers that are doing this is also my answer. I wonder if putting assumption. Something also somewhere should happen. It's not that you just feeding itself or om omit attack. So we can look at uh, this particular 
So whatever we are discussing is being summarized in this diagram. So, yes, so this is the beginning point. This side. So here we are assuming that we have identified the problem, but when we put in a diagram here, we don't necessarily be sure that this is a problem that we identified, we have defined the problem. We assume that we've identified and here that's I can do it. Means prepared in right proportion. What's that? That's an activity, right? Exactly. Then what else must happen for the meals to be prepared? What's this assumption? If all the required principles for the prepared of meals are then being applied for them, this would be what? If this is meant, or if this condition is meant, it means to wait for meals to be prepared in right proportion. And you come with the way which is right proportion. It's not just about preparing the meals, but it should be in right proportion according to the number we have in our right? So we can have to wait and only prepare two meals which will not be sufficient to them. No wonder the assumption of course is very clear. If all the required inputs for us to prepare the meals in the right proportion is available, it means this is not possible. We don't have all the required meals we can prepare for that or partial. Then this does like we said, you choose to eat meals, increase in school attendance. Where can this go? Can, can this be an outcome or an output? Can this be an outcome or an output? There is it, you can use it. That's an output, right? Then this one down there is what? Outcome. Increased in school attendance. Increased, you can only say increased after you observe two by three of the time. Maybe say three months, right? Exactly. We can't say just only single day that like we have. Then pupils, pupils have eaten the meals. It's resulting in what? Increase the concentration in class. That's what an outcome, right? Exactly. Then we move in. The increase in school attendance is leading to what? Sorry? Improved performance. What else must happen so that this leads to this? There's this assumption. So, in as much as they may be increasing in school attendance, but with this, guys should have uh, right learning materials, right? Because they can just be going to class, but the materials that are they have no sufficient enough to hold. Or maybe they are using the old conventional room to do such a thing. So it is right learning materials and teachers are there to teach pupils. And, and these pupils should understand they should understand. That's an assumption. And this is a key assumption. That's why I said that. Not just about increasing attendance, but something somewhere that happened. Wonder what else problems like this. You are going to interpret the government, you know their influence will be hidden. I mean, be hidden. So, you are going to be influencing the government. As you are administering this part, you are also going to influence the government to provide for these right materials. Or maybe if you go to a path to provide these materials, you can buy, but the government will just include the right teachers. Who now is going to do this teaching sales? So, if this happens, all of this, everything will combine and give us what? Improved but this is ending this good crossing. We all know the reason why. Who knows the reason why they use concentration in class? Just ending there, smooth which is there. And the answer is very simple, but I know they were framed it. <laughs> yes, sir. I just want to be in class. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> eh? Interesting. Interesting. Who else can give it a try? Like the answer is very simple. Yes. Uh, let us say the part of the uh, learning 
the materials But I understand your point. You are very right, sir. You justify it so well. Like you say that this can come from the right. Are you saying from the which one? So this one should that should be come from here. Because it should be possible. This should be possible. Yeah. So he's suggesting that this can be here, which is nothing wrong. Even the way it is, it's also possible that right? because kids are just in that things are being put somewhere and these things should be given on people that comes to school. Can you become that's the way kids are? Like it doesn't matter how we put it, but provided they just show how these things are happening in the US. And that's what we say that it proposes the steps that are necessary for a desired change to come. So this is how it's supposed to come in the other. Then if you are now just doing it in a ratio, you can just say if all the required students are valuable, then mills will be prepared in the right proportion. If mills are prepared in the right proportions, then pupils will eat mills, then and so on and so forth. If pupils they eat mills, then it will reach to increase the concentration. So you are just using the if and then, if and then, if and then. So that's how the theory of change is supposed to be. It's mandatory. I know it's time up. Unless there are questions, then we can call it a night. Any questions? 